Hey everyone, today we're going to show you how we built this giant rebound game for our games room. We'll show you all the steps we took, including the mistakes we made that we would change if we were going to build this again. We started with some maple plywood and laid out the design that we wanted to do on the computer. Now we cut out the pockets on a CNC machine, but you could also use a handheld rotor, a straight edge, and a steady hand. We placed tape where the cuts were going to be, just to help prevent any possible tear out. All done, ready to come out of the machine. Now the fun part, peeling off the tape. There's just something so satisfying about it. It left a perfect finish with no tear out. And the cutout, with tabs to hold it in place temporarily. Into the laser to make pockets for the inlays, for the scoring markers. I realize most people don't have a big laser to do the inlays like this, but you can paint the markers on using a stencil. Just make sure you use a paint that isn't going to react with your finish and run. With the pockets done, we use the laser to cut the inlays for a perfect fit. Once dry, we just sand them flush. And I need to be more careful. I recut and repaired it. It came out looking fine in the end, but that led me to mistake number two. I centered the engravings on each side of the board, forgetting that the board was going to be inset into the frame. So the engravings ended up three eighths of an inch out at the end. Not a big deal but it's slightly noticeable. I cut out and cleaned up the pocket. I cut some cherry one and a half inches high for the backstop and tested it for fit. I marked them and cut them to length, which was a mistake. I should have waited and cut them afterwards once the frame was on because I ended up adding a small piece. I took that whole assembly and glued it onto another quarter inch piece of plywood. 
You could really use anything here because most of it's not going to be seen except for the very bottom. While it was drying, I cut the center divider, also an inch and a half high. Again, I should have waited till the frame was on because I ended up adding a small piece at the end. I then marked it for the notches. Then it was time to cut the other small inlays for the scoring lanes. Glued everything in. Including the dowels where the elastic bands will go. That center divider should have been a couple of inches shorter. How it extends past the dowel? If your shot's to the very right, it'll come over and hit that divider instead of going around. That's something I would change if I was building it again, and I adjusted the drawing at the beginning. Now it's time to cut the components for the inner frame at two inches tall. I cut a three quarters of an inch wide groove to fit the plane surface. The side pieces will need to be cut at 45 degrees to account for the backboard. And the front edge need to be notched for the shooting lane. If you're not going to do the double frame, why do your corners instead to hide that gap at the end? I glued up a walnut frame for the top. You can then sand or plane it level. I made a template at the top and started by just cutting the V-shape out. Once that was in position, I marked the outer edge for trimming. I added in a couple of extra blocks for support and then glued it all together spreading the glue with my finger brush. While that was drying, I set up some maple wood in the CNC machine to make the embellishments for the top. For the 3D carvings, it does it in two parts. The first process clears up most of the excess waste.
Then we come back in with a very fine bit to do the details. cut the excess out on the bandsaw. We cleaned it up on the sander. I cut the outer frames in walnut, notching it where we need it. And glued them on. And it was just time to sand everything up. I positioned the embellishments and glued them on. Then sprayed on multiple coats of a high gloss lacquer. and cut some self-adhesive felt for the pocket. Then it was just a matter of installing some rubber bands and we were ready to play. I looked for some taller ones, but the only taller ones I could find were industrial ones that came in 100 pound boxes. So I went with two of these instead. The one other thing I'm going to do is install some leveling feet on the bottom. As the plane pieces roll so easily, if your table's not level, it can affect the plane. Man, that red player sucks. Have fun gaming, and thanks for watching.